This morning, I saw the countryside from my window, a long time before sunrise, with nothing but the morning star, which looked very big. These are Vincent van Gogh's words, artist behind the world-famous painting, The Starry Night. It is said that this line holds the inspiration for the painting, but it's just one line that mentions night and one star. I mean, I know the painting is called Starry Night, but still, it's just one line, which has evidently been elaborated into a whole story here, with a few other characters in play. And it's not just any story, it's a story that's one of a kind. You might want to ponder on a few things at this point. Why did these elements, like the long green-brown cypress tree, find their way into the painting if they aren't mentioned in that inspiration line? And where did they come from? Because it is said that no such village was visible from Van Gogh's window. And why are there waves in the sky? To try and relate to why additional elements were used by Van Gogh in Starry Night, let's trace the path of making a painting ourselves. The first step is to choose what to paint. You can call it inspiration or a reference. That's not too difficult. I'm trying to find the reason behind the composition of Starry Night, so I'm obviously going to make that. Let me just open the picture on Google so that I can see it and make it. Would you look at that? So many paintings, and quite a few of them are by different artists. You can say that by looking at the colors, the style, and other minute differences. Even though that is, very interestingly, all of the photos have the same name written below them. Van Gogh. If I copy this painting, mine will undoubtedly go into the same list under one name. That's not mine. And I shouldn't have a problem with that, because creating art is all about using one's creativity. And simply copying someone else's artwork does not give me the satisfaction of creation or the power to call it mine. The more my painting resembles Starry Night, the more it won't be mine. But it would be wrong to say that my stubbornness to create something original means that nothing can inspire me. There's a difference between being inspired while retaining originality and using inspiration as a first model to create carbon copies. Voltaire said, Originality is nothing but judicious imitation. No matter what we make, our work and ideas are always inspired in some way by another entity that came before. Originality is what we contribute, what we add to the mix to create something that did not exist before in its current form. I find my inspiration in this photo which was taken in Lonavla. You might look at it and say, this is just a family photo, what's so inspiring about that? But what I'm looking at are not the people, but the hill at the back, which has a particularly unique structure, unlike any other hill I've seen before. And as a person who's into realistic drawings, I look to renovate the most aesthetically pleasing elements, like that hill. One plus point here is that in nature paintings, like this one, nothing is defined. I can choose what to take, what to leave, I can add, I can experiment, and I can try out new techniques. The picture for sure holds the inspiration, but the painting in the end will be a combination of not only the elements from this picture, but also the color theme, composition, and technique of the painting, which are totally up to me. So, picture has been chosen, and I have a blank canvas ready. Pencil sketch is done. Moving on to the most interesting part, the color study. Take a look at this picture once again. Which is the predominant color that you see here? Green, right? So let's start by thinking about how we'll paint the green areas. If you look closely enough, you'll see that there are so many different shades of green in this picture. 
and to really bring out the beauty of the natural elements, I will have to capture those shades. But where do I get so many shades from? From my paint set? Not possible, because it looks like this. 19 colors, two greens. And I can't see these two greens in their plain, unchanged form anywhere in the picture. If I put these two everywhere, you can picture that the prominent hill will look like a bed with green bed covers. Clearly, those two greens are of no use to me in their present state. The idea that something is not in the shape that we desire, that it doesn't have utility unless a certain development is made to it, is the driving force for action towards giving it that utility, that shape. The idea that something has not reached its potential and the need for it to get there, that is inspiration. So what if I can't get so many shades? I can make them. Forget 19 colors. What if I told you that I need only eight, not just to make the green areas, but the entire painting? All that needs to be done is the right colors need to be mixed in the right proportions to get the desired shade. Let's try this out. Take a look at the light green part of the hill, and then take a look at these tube paints. Try to work out which of these colors will you mix to get that light green shade. Let's cross-check our answers. I feel that it requires sap green, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, and white. And that gives me the fourth color from the left. Looks pretty similar, right? In the same way, I made the other colors, and now it's time to start with the base coat of the painting. And we have our first slip up. I put a very dark green on a mountain in the background, the kind of color that I can actually see on the tiny hill just in front of it in the foreground, which means that the background and the foreground have the same color. Try to think about what could go wrong here. Are you able to differentiate between the background and the foreground here? No, you can't, because they have the same color, which means that there is nothing showing the distance between them, and that is making the painting structurally wrong. Our mistakes often push us to look for alternative paths. To cover our mistakes in a way that they add to, rather than diminish our work, we have to broaden our perspectives. We have to think in different ways. And in doing so, we discover, implement, and learn new methods and techniques. Mistakes play a crucial role in changing our approach towards successfully completing our tasks. And in this way, mistakes inspire us to become innovative. I just remembered this technique called glazing, which my art teacher, Mitesh sir, taught me in which we dilute paint to such an extent when, that when it's applied on a dry painted area, it acts like a colored translucent cover. So I'll finish this part of the painting in the same dark colors, and then use a light bluish gray glaze to bring the darkness down, and to also give the background mountains a similar color shade as the blue mountains in the far background, which you can see in the picture. My mistake inspired me to think of techniques not only to correct it, but to also let it enhance my work. Not only could I separate the foreground from the background, but I could also give the background mountains the uniformity that they were lacking with respect to the blue mountains in the far background by giving them that light bluish gray glaze. This happened only because I changed my approach towards making those mountains. Instead of just making the same dark color again and using white to make it lighter, I used glazing, which worked like a charm. After the episode with the background mountains, I continue with my painting. And as my painting gradually develops, what I have with me now becomes very different from what I started with. Initially, I had a picture that looked like this. A few boulders on the bottom left, a few wildflowers on the bottom right, three central human figures, and a hill at the back. 
I decided to remove the human figures in the beginning itself because I am still learning how to draw realistic human figures. I ensured enough space at the top of my canvas so that I could complete those clouds that are actually half cut in the reference so that it looks more aesthetically pleasing. When I knew that I had limited time to finish my painting, I decided to cut out part of the picture, including only the scene above the rocks. But those beautiful yellow flowers that went in the cutout part, I really wanted them in my painting. And that's why I decided to replace the cropped hill on the bottom right with those wildflowers. Get this, not only the reference picture, but my time, my knowledge, and my sense of aesthetics, exclusive to me, had their part to play in my inspiration and my outcome. Could it be that in Van Gogh's case too, something much more than one night sky was his inspiration? Something else in there that was unique to his personality? Let's revisit the three questions that we began with. Why did these elements, like the long green brown cypress tree, find their way into the painting if they aren't mentioned in that inspiration line? The cypress tree is symbolic of a bridge between life and death. Think about this in the context that when Van Gogh made Starry Night, he was suffering from a mental illness for which he was being treated in an asylum. And only about an year after making this painting, he committed suicide. Where did these elements come from? Because it is said that no such village was visible from Van Gogh's window. The village is said to have been inspired from the one in Van Gogh's native, Netherlands. Keep in mind that when Van Gogh made Starry Night, the asylum that he was being treated in was in southern France, in a completely different place. Why are there waves in the sky? The art movement that Van Gogh followed was post-Impressionism in which artists use distorted images to express emotions. The rolling patterns in the sky show a sort of turbulence, the kind of mental state that Van Gogh was in. So Starry Night actually drew from much more than one star and one night sky. It drew from Van Gogh's emotions, the sky, from his imagination, the cypress tree, and from his memories the village. It drew from his being, and that made it exceptional. Like I said, the more my painting resembles Starry Night, the more it won't be mine. So where does inspiration come from? It comes from any object, idea, or work that had come before, like the hill in my case, or the star in Van Gogh's. It comes from our imperfections, because only when we feel the necessity of getting a desired output, only when we know that something is not where it should be, we work towards perfecting what is incomplete. Like making the various shades of green. Inspiration comes from our mistakes, because they open doors to explore new possibilities and techniques that can not only correct the mistake itself, but also enhance the quality of our work, like the thing with the background mountains. But the main inspiration comes from one's personality, which is characterized by one's own experiences. The process is shaped by one's personality, leading to an outcome that can't be seen anywhere else and can't be created by anyone else. Leonardo da Vinci, artist of the most famous painting in the world, the Mona Lisa, said that art is never finished, only abandoned. This is where I abandon my painting and leave you all to discover inspiration like an artist. Thank you.